How's it going everyone? Today I want to talk about the 10.1 tier set bonuses for Enhancement Shaman. These were originally announced by Blizzard a few weeks ago and they were pretty awful when first announced for Enhancement. Luckily Blizzard did tune these about a week ago now and so I want to get my first impressions on those and how I think this might affect our gameplay going into 10.1. So starting out here with the 2 set bonus. It is when we cast Sundering, we get a 24% increase to our mastery for 15 seconds. Now, I don't think this is the most exciting tier set bonus we've ever seen, but it is just free stats and 24% mastery is a pretty, pretty decent jump and I think should have a pretty good effect on our damage. This is beneficial to both of our current talent builds, the physical and the elemental uh, talent setups, which is nice that this isn't really kind of shoehorning you into one build or the other. It obviously does favor the elementalist setup a little bit more because the physical definitely prefers haste over mastery, but mastery is by no means bad for that either. So that is good. This is helpful to both builds. One thing I want to talk about with this though, and it applies to the four set as well, is the fact that these tier sets are all around sundering. It definitely seems like Blizzard wants to make this a more impactful button to press. It is something that we are running in pretty much every single build right now and in single target it's not too impactful it's usually more as just kind of a filler spell there most of the time if you are running the physical build i guess you are prioritizing a bit more during do wins because it is that main hand weapon attack but for the elementalist setup you are mainly just kind of using this as uh, a fill in the gap type of spell so when it comes to single target like that it is nice to have this be a bit more impactful than it has been in in the past but when it comes to mythic plus it does kind of suck because now we are encouraged to press sundering every time it is off cooldown and one thing we do right now in mythic plus is we like to use sundering for its cc ability its damage is good yes in aoe but it does do that instant aoe interrupt on uh, a uncapped amount of mobs which is really really nice to have in mythic plus so it's going to be kind of sad to lose that ability to hold this in the future but we do have a lot of built-in CC tools anyways, so I'm not sure how much this will affect us. I also heard going into the next season of Mythic Plus that they were trying to cut down on the amount of interrupts a little bit, but uh, I guess we'll have to see if that is actually true or not. Overall though, I think the idea of making Sundering feel more impactful to press is kind of cool because it is a really cool ability in general. So I am interested to see how this plays around in the future. The four set bonus is also obviously built around Sundering, except when we press Sundering, we're now going to get a 30% damage increase for our physical and fire damage spells for 15 seconds, as well as getting a 100% increased damage to our next three chain lightning casts. And each of these casts will also refund 50% of the Maelstrom weapon stacks consumed. And obviously we need to talk about this four set in two parts, but I actually want to start with the chain lightning portion of this first. Now at first glance, you might think, oh, they're just trying to make chain lightning do even more damage in AoE, because right now its damage is kind of okay in AoE. It's not awful by any means, but I think it is outpaced by like Hailstorm. So it definitely is good to get this bonus damage on chain lightning, but what I think this is actually doing is that it's going to cause us to actually use chain lightning and single target and i think that is going to be a little counterintuitive at first and the reason why we would actually use this in single target is because with the 100 damage increase on it it's going to be doing more damage than lightning bolt and even if it was doing slightly less damage than lightning bolt i have a feeling we would probably still want to work it into the rotation anyways because when it is refunding those mails from weapon stacks it is actually giving us cooldown reduction on Feral Spirit because those Elstra Weapon Sacks are triggering our Witch Doctor's Ancestry talent, which is going to reduce cooldown Feral Spirits by two seconds for each of those stacks gained. So when you put it all together, if you're getting three Chain Lightning casts that are refunding upwards of five Maelstrom Sacks each, that is actually giving us a potential 30 seconds off the cooldown of Feral Spirits, which is going to be very good in both single and multi-target. Jumping back to the first part of the four sets, the 30% increase to physical and fire damage is going to affect both builds pretty much equally. The physical build is obviously built around Stormstrike, and so it will benefit from the 30% increase to physical damage, and the 
elemental setup is going to focus on lava lash and those hot hand procs so that will obviously be benefiting from the 30 percent fire damage the potential big winner of this is actually going to be fire nova now on ptr fire nova has actually been changed to be flame strike damage rather than just fire damage and flame strike damage means that it will benefit from both the increase to physical damage and the increase to fire damage so Fire Nova is actually going to be doing quite a bit more damage during these Sundering windows. But this is still a big question mark for me, and of course there could be additional tuning to this on the PTR, but I've been kind of looking at some numbers on this, and I'm not quite sure this is still going to be enough for Fire Nova to really be used much over Hailstorm. So here's a graph of some numbers that I pulled from the PTR. The two lines in the light green and red with circles as their points are going to be the Frost Shock lines and the other lines are some variation of Fire Nova damage. So you can see that even with having Fire Nova and the Sundering buff plus buffs from Wolves, the damage of Fire Nova is still not really ahead of Frost Shock with the 10 Hailstorm stacks plus Ice Strike until it reaches about 4 targets. Once you go past that 4 target mark though, once you have Fire Nova and the buff from Sundering and Wolves, Fire Nova's damage is pretty significantly higher than Frost Shock's damage. However, there are so many different variables to this that I'm not really sure that Fire Nova is still going to be able to win out over Hailstorm. For one, Fire Nova's cooldown is quite a bit longer than Frost Shock's, so you can get off these Frost Shock's much more frequently. You could argue that you might not always be able to have the 10 Hailstorm stacks, and you might also argue that Ice Strike will not always be matched up with your Frost Shots. However, Ice Strike's cooldown is the same as Fire Nova's, so you should be able to get these Ice Strike Empowered Frost Shocks off about as often as you can get off the Fire Nova's anyways. Along with that, you do of course need Sundering Up, and that's only going to be up every 40 seconds. The buff does last for 15 seconds though from the tier sets, so that is a decent amount of times where you could probably get in around two Fire Novas in that time period. Another thing with this is that I think that Fire Nova is going to benefit much more from a physical damage setup rather than the Elementalist setup because while Elemental Spirits has the potential to give you two Fire Wolves, which would pull ahead of the two physical wolves that you would get with the physical build setup. There's obviously much more randomness there, and even if you only have one fire wolf, it's still going to be less damage potential than a fire nova empowered by two physical damage wolves. So I think if anything, you're really only going to see a fire nova build if it is a more physical damage centered build. And ultimately, when it comes to single target or low target counts, Hailstorm is still going to pull quite a bit ahead of Fire Nova. And so it's really going to come down to the specific encounter and how big of pulls you're doing in Mythic Plus. I don't think we really have any potential to see Fire Nova be used very heavily in raids still. If anything, there might be a chance to see it in some Mythic Plus dungeons depending on pull sizes. I think some dungeons like Freehold or Bracken Hide Hollow are going to have bigger pulls that we might potentially see Fire Nova in, but this is definitely something that we'll have to look out for uh, going into 10.1. Unfortunately, as much as I do love Fire Nova though, I think that Hailstorm is probably still going to be the go-to. So just to summarize everything up here, I think the tier set is in a much better place now than it was originally, so really happy with the tuning that Blizzard did on this. I don't think it's actually going to change our gameplay too terribly much. If you aren't running Sundering now, you of course will always be running Sundering going forward in 10.1. And when it comes to our specific talent builds, I don't think that this is really going to change our talent builds that much. I think you'll still see potential for the physical build to shine. I think you'll still see potential for the elementalist build to shine in different situations. So I am definitely happy about that. And in terms of rotation, I think the only thing this is really going to change is that Sundering is basically always going to be our priority whenever it's available to be used, unlike now when we're kind of having to hold it in Mythic Plus somewhat or just kind of using it more as a filler in single target. Uh, this is obviously going to be something we are always prioritizing over basically anything else. And Chain Lightning will probably be in a similar position where we are wanting to make sure we get the uses off of the 100% increased damage on that from the set bonus, as well as getting those Maelstrom weapon stacks refunded from it in order to get wolves back off cooldown even quicker. Anyways, that's it for me for this video. Thanks for watching, guys. Let me know what you think about the sets in the comments below.